Hi, I'm Mike. Calving season 2020 is almost over and we only have a few cows left to go. On the ranch, that means it's time to shift gears, but first, we're gonna take a look back and catch up with some of our best calving stories of the year on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Calving season on the ranch stretches from April through May. And we always hope that when we put in the bulls, that they get out and they get the job done. The faster and that they're done, the quicker we can wrap up calving and move on to the next thing on the ranch as spring re really begins to grab a hold and get to work itself. Look at all that green grass. This year was one of the hardest calving seasons that I can remember here on the ranch. Not because we lost a bunch of calves or even that we really had that many difficult births, but because it seemed to take forever to get started. All right, let's go. Do you guys think there's gonna be any baby cows? I hope so, but every time I say there is, there's probably not. There's probably So I was really kind of hoping that we would have the first calf today because Mike was gone. And so I could steal all the glory. Today is beautiful. I wish somebody would have a calf today and at least get the ball rolling, but hey. We can't all be trendsetters, right guys? We technically began calving this year back in March when our first calf was born early. And that started a season that would definitely take us up and down and all around. That calf didn't live longer than a few minutes. And it should have been a warning of the weird calving season to come. Along with calving season this year came COVID-19, which continues to turn many of our lives upside down and, put a, and it put a twist on calving that we never would have expected. This is our third calving season here on the ranch. And historically, calving doesn't really bring the viewers like haying does, or even the selling of calves in the fall, but it really should. It's the beginning of life on the ranch. It's the start of a cycle that brings everything new and fresh. And with the quarantine and self-isolation along with sheltering in place, we were right there with you. I couldn't say I didn't want to go to work because work is right here. And every time I set foot outside, I'm at work. But this year we got to do something a little bit different. And that was bring you along with us. Calving officially began on April 10th with our very first live calf being born on the ranch. That calf, calf number one, was named Faith and began to symbolize what many of us were hoping for at a time when no one really knew what to expect. And we're back and check this out. We have a calf. Look at that. It is a baby cow. Uh, she has done her job. It is a live baby calf. We're gonna come up and take a look at this little one who was just born. Hey, mommy. Good job, kiddo. Yeah, you did good. Look at that baby you made. Look at that baby you made. By then, we had begun what we were calling the 30 and 30. It was 30 daily vlogs in 30 days right here on the ranch. And in fact, we were only 21 days into it. And that calf, Faith, I believe breathed new life into the ranch and a number of all of our lives. The 30 and 30 vlogs was meant to be a way to give people a daily escape, a chance to visit the ranch and hang out with us, no matter where we were, or what we were doing. And from that day forward, we were calving. Calves started dropping like crazy. Every mom was trying to get, the, get in the action, get on film. And by the end of the daily vlogs, we had over 20 calves that were born on the ranch. But they weren't all success stories. Our first casualty of the year came in the form of a calf that was number six. A calf that we found in dire need of help. This calf belongs to number 61 was born last night and my fear is that this calf froze down well that's about all we can do for her right now um, I hate to leave you hanging here but this is uh, this is where we're set for right now anyway uh, check back tomorrow we'll see how she's doing and the rest of the herd of course the other calves uh, will keep on doing our job here and 
keeping these calves alive as long as we can as we continue with the 30 in 30. It's starting to rain out here. Rain is always good. Later that night, number six did pass away. And after an autopsy, we found out that internal damage to the calf, its lungs along with some internal bleeding, all that indicated that it had been stepped on or laid on at some point, a crushing injury that ended its life prematurely. But that couldn't stop us. We kept going and calves kept being born. Each and every day, you would meet me for work and we'd head out finding, tagging, and making sure that newborn calves were healthy and ready to face the world. We brought you along as we faced hard decisions, including one to end a cow's life in a last ditch effort to save her calf through a field C-section. One in which even our neighbors came and became involved. But even with so much help and hard work, we still lost the battle. But the war continued. By the end of the vlog, we had brought you through the ups and downs of calving on the ranch. And our greatest win was actually just around the corner, when Goliath survived his unlikely successful birth. No. <laughs> Come on, baby. Then we watched Bambi's calf being born, a reminder of how amazing life is, and here more recently, a mom whose only goal later, is to get out of life. quarantine. <laughs> okay, so maybe mom's not as happy as I thought she would be with me in there, uh, but she's calmed down quite a bit in the last few days. Calving season is an amazing time on the ranch, and it's a time like no other. At no other time on the ranch do lives hang in the balance. If we break down during haying, uh, we know it's not gonna kill a mom or maybe your calf. We, can, we just can't make hay, I guess. We can figure out how to buy more, but during calving, you can't buy your way out of trouble. It is what it is, and I wouldn't have it any other way because it's after calving has begun to wind down that you can look back and you see every single one of your success stories right in front of you every time you look through the field. We see number one, Faith, whose first few days in the ranch were spent with her being the only calf here until another calf came to join her. Before we knew it, number 10 was on the ground while Snow still sat here. And even though she couldn't really get the hang of standing up, it was hard to do. She has no problem getting up and moving now. All the way to number 23, which we helped get up and moving during our 24 hour live stream. While some calves were never given a chance, many, many more thrive on the ranch. And I would like to think that it's the philosophy that we can apply to our own lives, even during these crazy times in the world. While some days are hard, and at the end you feel absolutely defeated, in the end there's, there's way more good things and good results to look back and admire than there is bad. I, I said it time and time again during this calving season that each day we had a chance to hit a home run, and some days you are gonna strike out. But the game is far, far from over. And we know that every year, that we're here to do it again, that's a win. This game, it's almost over. I'm waiting to tag number 100. And then there's just a few calves left to be born on the ranch. The last ones will be drawn out over the next few weeks and we'll have one here and one there. But I'm proud to have gotten this far. The next game is to be determined and guaranteed it's not gonna be an easy win. I hope that you can subscribe, come along with us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary each and every time right here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you can find us. And I invite you to personally come over and join us on our sister channel. It's called Beyond the Ranch, search for it on YouTube. And if you'd like to learn more about us and what we do, we can't wait to see you there. Until then, have a great week and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.